Hey everybody, how you doing? Good, good, excellent. That was an amazing uh, set of demos, wasn't it? So I work with TensorFlow helping build community and collaboration around the open source project. And usually I put the thank you slide at the end for listening to me. But actually, I want to thank you for contributing and being part of the TensorFlow project. Whether you're here in this room or on the live stream, there's some, been some uh, amazing talk on YouTube from people in China and India and Japan, all over the world joining us virtually today. Thank you for your contributions. The project is where it is today because of you. Of course, in core TensorFlow alone, we've had this many commits. Uh, it's now, this figures out of date, over 50,000 from over 1,800 contributors. And much more than just code commits. You know, there have been 39,000 Stack Overflow questions about TensorFlow. We have 66 machine learning Google developer experts, many of whom are here with us today. So welcome and thank you guys. It's really great to have you with us, and thank you for everything you do helping teach people about TensorFlow. And we've had 14 guest posts to the TensorFlow blog, and that keeps going up. There's so many ways that people are contributing, whether you're organizing a meetup, whether you're teaching other people, whether you're speaking at conferences. Thank you. You're really helping build out the TensorFlow ecosystem. So in this talk, what I want to do is discuss how we're growing the ecosystem and report back on some of the changes that we've made over the last year. So I'm going to cover how we're making it easier to get involved in TensorFlow, how also we're trying to consult better with the users in the community and be more transparent about our development. I'm going to cover how we're empowering everybody to get involved and to do more, and increasing the number of uh, contact points where you can get involved in the project. And finally, I'm going to go into a bit more depth about the conference that was announced this morning, the TensorFlow World. So let's talk about how we're making contribution easier to TensorFlow. One of the most important things to help people uh, contribute to the project is increasing its modularity. You heard Martin talk this morning about the low-level APIs. And we, with the move to TensorFlow 2.0, we're trying to make it less of a monolith, both in terms of code and in terms of people organization. When you come and you want to contribute to an open source project, it helps to be able to find where to contribute and who to work with. By splitting things out, we're creating more surface area where it's easy to start building and creating new projects. And our special interest groups play a big part in this, and I'll talk a bit more about them later. But it's not just code. There's so many more places to contribute this year compared to where we were last year. So I'm going to talk briefly about our documentation groups, the groups getting involved in testing, and people who are blogging, and on YouTube, and more. You know, I was super excited to see last week that we have published a TensorFlow tutorial now in Korean. And that's not a translation that we've done in our team, but that has come from the community. So thank you so much to Hassan Park for the Korean work. Similarly, we're able also to publish it in Russian. Thank you to Andrew Stepin. This is just so exciting to see that TensorFlow is being taken to more areas around the world, thanks to you. I'm also really excited about the TensorFlow 2.0 testing group. Led by Paige Bailey, this is a bunch of contributors and Google developer experts who are working to give TensorFlow 2.0 a thorough test. And you see on the screen an example of a friction log. And so what's happening here is the folks are going through ML workflows with TensorFlow 2.0, documenting what they find delightful and awesome, and also things that could be a little bit better. If you'd like to join in this work, this group uh, meets weekly and often has guest talks from maintainers and SIG leaders and so on, and is really helping uh, bring TensorFlow 2.0 from the cutting edge into something that is thoroughly tested and ready for use. I already mentioned we have over 14 posts uh, from guests on the TensorFlow blog. This is a, a great, from a great post about real-time person segmentation in the browser with TensorFlow.js. that comes from a grad student and researcher at ITP. So whether it's testing, whether it's documentation, whether it's blogs, conference talks, thank you. Now I want to talk a little bit about TensorFlow RFCs. As you probably know, RFC means request for comments. This time last year, we weren't that organized about how we evolved TensorFlow's design in terms of communicating it. And I stood on this stage and told you about how we were going to launch the RFC process. Well, 
Now we've accepted 21 RFCs over the period of the last year. This is our key way to communicate design, where before code gets uh, landed in the project, we post an RFC about the design and consult widely. And this isn't just about code that's coming in from the TensorFlow core team outwards. They can be created on and commented on by anyone. And we've had several RFCs that have come from the broader community, and I expect to see so many more of those in the future. We have several, for instance, from the SIG groups already. One of the things I'm most proud about is how the RFC process is underpinning the 2.0 transition. As was mentioned earlier, but all the major changes in TensorFlow 2.0 have been proposed and consulted with in RFCs. You know, this isn't just a great way of consulting and getting information and feedback. Going forward, you now have a big repository of technical documentation about why design choices were made a certain way in TensorFlow. And it's a great educational resource as well for people who are coming on and want to get involved in contributing to the project. So I really want to give a big thanks to anyone who has authored or reviewed an RFC. You've played a vital role in making TensorFlow better. Let's talk a bit about the social structure of TensorFlow. You know, last year I talked about how coming to a large project can be a little bit daunting. You don't know where people are, where the people that have your interests in common are. And so we created the Special Interest Groups, or SIGs, as a way of organizing our work. There are so many uses of TensorFlow, so many environments, so many architectures, and many of them are outside of the scope that the core team can resource. And what we wanted to do was enable TensorFlow to grow and be more sustainable by creating a way for like-minded people to collaborate around well-defined projects. So this is why SIGs exist. They're groups of people who are working together for a defined project focus. We started last year with SIG Build, and now we have six of them up and running. I'm going to give you a quick uh, state of the SIGs. Many, in fact, most of all the SIG leaders are here with us today as well, so I'll give a shout out to them. And hopefully, uh, you'll also be able to talk to them in the lunch and tomorrow. So, SIG add-ons first. Thank you to uh, Sean Morgan and Amanda Fandango for leading this group. Martin mentioned uh, at the beginning of the day that TF Contrib is no longer a part of TensorFlow going into TensorFlow 2.0. And SIG add-ons is a place where a lot of that code is going. So these are parts of TensorFlow um, that don't fall into the core do conform to these well-defined APIs, so more losses, ops, layers, and so on. Now, there's already an RFC published about where you can find things that you used to find in Contrib that have gone into add-ons. And add-ons are also going to publish another RFC real soon to say, well, how can you get involved if you have your favorite uh, op or whatever that you want to step up and be a maintainer and maintain it for everybody, how you can join in the project? So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. SIG build. SIG build really is where TensorFlow meets the outside world, and it's not always the most glamorous piece of work, but building TensorFlow and packaging it and distributing it is tough. And so uh, thank you so much to Jason Zaman and Austin Anderson who lead that SIG. Uh, SIG build has achieved a lot in the last few months. One thing, it's the home for third-party contributed builds for architectures that we don't ship at as part of core, so IBM Power, Intel MKL, optimized builds. And SIG build works in improving the TensorFlow build and helps um, us be a better neighbor in the Python ecosystem as well. As you can imagine, machine learning generates a lot of extreme situations that uh, needs changes in ways we evolve in packaging and distributing software. SIG.io is a fantastic group that helps connect TensorFlow to other systems. You know, out in the real world, your data exists somewhere. You're using other systems. It's in other formats. So this group is led by Yong Tang and Anton Dmitriev. And it really ships support for extra file systems, extra file formats. So if you're using any of these things in the Apache ecosystem or any of these file formats, you can use the SIG add-ons uh, module to use that data in TensorFlow. This group is prolific. They've already dropped four releases. Uh, last week, they just created their 0.4 release. And they also ship our integration with, with uh, their module, too. SIG so networking is where a lot of the alternative networking uh, schemes that are available in Contrib are going to. This is led by Byron Yee and Jaron Bedoff. So if you're using GDR, Verbs, MPI, this is where you can find that. 
SIG Rust, led by Adam Chrome, is developing idiomatic language bindings for the Rust programming language. If you're interested in this or any of the other SIGs, please talk to the leaders. They really do want more help, and now they're up and running. They're in a great place to bring people on. If you're looking for a way to get involved in contributing to TensorFlow, this is an ideal one. Finally, let me touch on SIG TensorBoard. We've rebooted SIG TensorBoard this year to uh, really work closely with the community. And so this is a great time to be involved as the TensorBoard team are starting to consult and figuring out how we can best enable people who are using TensorBoard, both in terms of creating plugins or using it at scale. If you go to the demo area uh, above and go to the TensorBoard stand, you'll find Manny and Gal there who will be happy to talk to you. So this is the URL for anything you want to do with joining the TensorFlow community, from docs to testing to SIGs and all the other ways to be involved, the developer mailing list. Please head there. And if you're here with us rather than on the live stream, we're doing a contributor luncheon tomorrow where there'll be a little panel discussion about contributing to TensorFlow, and many of the core team and the SIG leaders will be there to talk to you. So finally, Let's move on and talk about TensorFlow World. I'm so excited about this. It's our vision to bring together the amazing people who are part of our community and give us space for everyone to connect with each other. You know, there's so much we can all learn from how we're all working with TensorFlow. So working with O'Reilly Media, we're going to have this event at the end of October this year here in Santa Clara. It'll be four days that really celebrate the TensorFlow ecosystem. We'll have content from talks to tutorials. There'll be an expo and a place for vendors to present. So we understand that as TensorFlow gets out into the real world, there is a large ecosystem um, beyond folks in this room. And we're really excited that that means that we can bring everyone together. You know, the main point of doing something like this is to connect all the amazing users and everyone with experience to share. As you heard, the call for proposals is now open. So if you have anything to share with your work, your product, your company, head to TensorFlow World, put in a proposal. You've got about four or five weeks uh, while the call for proposals is open, and then we'll be selecting talks a few weeks after that. I really hope that you will lend your voice to this event, and I'm so excited to see you all in October. So once again, thank you. We really appreciate how much that you are part of our community. Honestly, in my job, the best thing every day is when I get to talk to folks who are using or developing TensorFlow. And I know that's the same for everyone in the team. It really is so exciting to work with everybody here. This is the way uh, you can meet me. Please do, if you have any issue or uh, any desire to contribute or get involved with the community, reach out. We're really happy to talk to you. So thank you very much for your attention.